largo pagodan de la chita, largo. La 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 there is a real nobility and warmth and grandeur to a great baritone voice. Yes. Mm. Um, a, a real sophistication, a real elegance, um, both for Italian baritone parts and for German baritone yeah. parts. And French. I mean, there, French. there's a lot of very interesting, beautiful French repertoire for, for baritone. Yes. Um, if you think of a singer like Dietrich fischer dieskau probably one of the greatest baritones ever, he, he had such an extraordinary flexibility somehow in both vocally and in and nimbleness with the, with his text that was to me he's to me he's the baritone of all time he defied categorization he said yes, everything he from well, from rigoletto to to, to, Bach, to yes but he didn't sing as much opera or was he, i would say he was not as successful in opera because his voice didn't have a heroic quality to it, but That's his right. leader singing is unsurpassed. Um. And it's interesting because his recording of Hans Sachs in Meistersinger is remarkable, and it's remarkable for the text, except mm -hmm. that somehow, sometimes it's too clipped, the text is too clear, and you actually yes. lose the line. Yes. But, but yes. boy, what a well, great. What is beauty in a artist. baritone voice? Because there's a. There's a, it has a lot to, for me to do with the resonance and, mm -hmm. and again the sort of pliancy of the instrument mm -hmm. and the timbre. Yes. So, and there are heroic baritones who are really, you know, almost putting a tremendous amount of, sometimes too much force behind the voice. And then there's a lyric baritone, which I find sometimes fascinating to hear, whether it's in the, the Broke, the Mozart, or the French repertoire. Um, but the, the roles, um, and they tend to also be on the darker side of the story. Yes. Mm -hmm. Verdi seems to have written some of his greatest roles for baritone, so I always yes. imagine that he was maybe more inspired by the sound of a baritone to um, create roles like Rigoletto, like right. Simon Bocanegra, like Falstaff. Or maybe because that he felt that particular quality of the baritone made, enabled him to write a somehow to, to depict a character with more complexity than, than right. the Right, yes, right. I don't know. Yes, yes. and one thinks of, of great Italian at baritones like Tito Gobbi, like Piero Capuccilli, mm -hmm. who, who really define the, the sound yes. of a, a marvelous, uh, heavy lyric mm -hmm. Italian at baritone. And the mark is a great cantabile, is the ability to spin out a long yes. a legato yes. line, uh, yes. which is so beautiful. Now, I am, it's very hard for me to find repertoire and concert with baritone. Everything is for soprano and tenor, so yep. that's, the, the baritone, again, is not often the romantic lead. Yes. Um, so we're hoping to change that because there's a, uh, I think the two sounds are really beautiful together. Absolutely. And then we move into the German baritone repertoire, both Mozart, which, which tends to be written for low baritones, mm -hmm. um, the roles of the Count and Figaro, Don Giovanni Don and Leporello, yeah. tend to be for bass baritones, or at times even basses have sung the role of Figaro. Yes. Um, but then the Wagner low voice repertory for bass baritone, the great heroic Wagner parts like Wotan, yes. um, like Amfortas in Parsifal, like yep. Hans Sachs in Meistersinger, um, that's a whole different category of its own. And difficult to, to cast. Yeah. Difficult to cast because of the scale of voice yes. required and the sheer stamina required. Yes. Um, we, we've lived through that with our performances of, of mm. Meistersinger, and, and James Morris singing Hans Sachs is one of the few people oh. who right. actually has the means, the vocal means, to get yeah. from the beginning to the Pacing end. Pacing is role. everything, and we've all seen people come to grief at the end of that opera. Well, and Wagner was pretty mean to the extent that <laughs> he seems to have written the most difficult music for mm. many of his characters at the end, uh, at the end of his <laughs> operas. So one thinks of, of the, the title role of Siegfried. Yes. Um, one thinks of Hans Sachs. Yes. Um, one thinks of Wotan in Valkyrie. Yes, um, indeed. Really fiendishly difficult. You'll parts. see singers backstage and thinking, "I'm pacing myself. I'm drinking enough. I'm I'm, I'm fortifying myself and eating." You know, we all well, have our tricks, but uh, yes, and everyone, all singers have, have their dish, different tricks to to deal with stamina issues. I'm yes, sure. Yeah. Well, I, I was standing backstage in the wings for Act Three of Meistersinger one night, and it was fascinating. To, to be standing next to Johann Botha, who was about to go on to sing the prize song, mm. which is the right. fifth, sixth time he yes. will have sung that music that evening, but in the m 
most bright spotlight. And on the other side of me was James Morris, um, wh who had been singing virtually nonstop for right. four and a half hours, needing to sing the most demanding monologues of his role uh, right at the end of Act Three. Mm. And it was like observing athletes right. gearing themselves up for the big race. It mm -hmm. truly is a marathon. Well, the whole stamina issue is very interesting because uh, if you think of people who go to a ball game and are shouting at their team, or, or go to a rock concert and are shouting and singing along, the next day in the office, you know they did something. You yes. know, where were you last night? An opera singer is expected to do all of that in a cultivated, sophisticated, and trained way, and the next day probably to rehearse something else and do it again. Yes. So um, I've had so many throat doctors say, we just don't know how you do what you do. Hmm. It's amazing yeah. that you come in and you're healthy and it's pristine. And that's a you know, 300 year tradition and a technique that has developed uh, over years that we learn. It takes 10 years yeah. at least. Or indeed spending your free time coming and talking about singing. Yes. As we are now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But the, I wrote a book called The Inner Voice yes. to help audiences and young singers know what they're getting into. Yeah. You know, because we all get to, um, a little bit frustrated sometimes when people, well-meaning people, will come up to us and, and far later in the career than this should happen saying, you know, you're really talented. You should take lessons. <laughs> <laughs> we all have those stories. Yeah. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to write down once and for all what's <laughs> yes. involved in this. And, and also the idea that you, you're so lucky to have been born for it with a voice, mm. which is 10%, people say, of what it takes to become a great singer. So much of it is learned, is studied, is adopted, and requires a tremendous amount of patience and uh, resilience and all of these qualities. But it's the 10% on which you depend. You have to have that. Because without it, nothing else Talent, matters. which is a lot your timbre. Yes. But it's also your ability to learn. And imagine teaching an instrument that is different in each human being. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because a piano is a piano. There'll be better pianos and worse pianos, but every human being is a different instrument altogether. It's, I suppose it's like no face is ever the same. And That's no, right. No, no set of vocal so when I stop singing, sort of in, yeah. I'll never be heard again, mm. uh, live. You know, yes, this is yeah. why we're, we have Memorex. Yes. <laughs> That's an old commercial. <laughs> <laughs> Bid for immortality. But you know, breaking the glass, we have to address this because I think this is fascinating. I was so disappointed as a young singer that no high note I sang ever even made the crystal move. <laughs> I wanted that so badly. And I, um, Mythbusters has produced a show on it that's online, and it's a middle voice pitch oh. that has to go through a, a, some sort of circle or prism and creates a vibration strong enough, and sure enough, it popped the glass. They figured it out. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> that's so, fascinating. So, so the pressure's off. <laughs> you were talking earlier about um, strength of voice, power of voice. Yes. But so much of it is about projection and technique yes. rather than pure brute force. Yes. yes. My teacher always said, uh, never sing on your principle. And it's this whole idea that the technique of projection, which is how to optimally use resonance uh, and the overtones and the sound spectrum, to send a voice out. For instance, a bright sound, which might not be loud next to you, will often carry much better in a huge room than a big, fat, dark sound. And the source of the sound is always the diaphragm. The source of the sound, of course, is, is that these folds, these vocal folds are vibrating at an impossibly um, fast uh, uh, level, and it's the breath, um, and and the breath, which is controlled to some degree by the diaphragm and by the muscles all around it, which enable the sound to be made. So if you pluck a string on a piano, it, it would sound like a rubber band if it didn't have the case. Mm -hmm. Or in any instrument, any stringed instrument, it's true. And really any instrument uh, altogether so it has some, some mechanism that's similar to this. And for us, our faces provide the resonance, the throat, the chest. Uh, and the breath and the, and the ability to um, uh, isolate and control the musculature and they're mostly involuntary, so it's sort right. of a miracle that we get it to work, uh, is what makes the sound resonate. And we want to do it with the least amount of effort. Well, a newborn baby can cry for hours without vocal yes. tiredness. It's and, yes. and what I, I heard somewhere was that <laughs> as we 
grow up, we become lazy and we no longer use the diaphragm and the vocal cords yes. in the correct way. Right. And so what you're doing when you develop a singing technique is relearning, relearning the instinctive way of producing sound that newborn babies have. And take away tension and take away all yeah. the other things that get in the way. Yeah. And we have to produce artistry and make it even sound all yes. across the spectrum. There's so much that goes into it. It's really, it's a lifelong fascination for me, which is why I'm interested in singing in any style, in any voice type. It, yes. it fascinates me. Yeah.